Hi everyone, I want to take a few minutes to go over the syllabus. This syllabus may or may not be the exact syllabus that we are using for your class, but no matter what, you will find that um, Hello everyone, I want to go over our syllabus. This may or may not be the syllabus for your class, but all of the syllabi are set up in the same way, and the important information is the same on all of the Health 315 syllabi. So at the top you will see my name. Um, if you come to my office, if we go to a maskless campus, you will still be required to wear a mask in my office. In such a closed in space, it's critical that we protect each other. Uh, office hours are listed and I'm also going to have office hours on WebEx in case people feel uncomfortable coming in person in a small area. And then you will have my office number which if I don't get the message it automatically goes to email. And in case something urgent happens you have my other my cell phone number to text me. So a lot of this you can go over on your own. Um, we have required textbooks. We have the writer's reference. I believe we're in the ninth or 10th edition right now. We are using APA 7. This book has good grammatical information as well as APA format and other formats. I require you to purchase it because it's something that you can use in your future. It's a good reference to have. There are other textbooks that you need to purchase, probably should not purchase, is these, it's the Doyle Ward in Early Book, and this is the book you used in Health 222 if you have taken Health 222 in the last year. We've agreed that we would use the same book in 222 and 315 to try to save money for the students. And then we have a free online source called the, the it's by University of Kansas, it's the Community Toolbox. Um, <clears throat> that's the rest of the information. The next thing you find on the syllabi are the outcomes for the class. These are the national standards for health educators and the NCHEC standards in which all of us train to become certified nationally. You can read those on your own. But those are all the items we have to cover in this class. And then this is an advanced writing course, so you have to also fulfill the advanced writing objectives. Course policies. Um, there's policies about people adding late. Uh, this is in addition to most uh, professors are going to have this in their syllabus about you're the requirement to wear a mask and, uh, and the disciplinary action that's taken if you refuse to. Attendance, I do not give points for you attending. I expect you to be in class. That's like your job. You go to work, you show up, you do your job. Um, uh, you are allowed two unexcused absences before any points count against you. And then there's several excused absences. Um, an excused absence, you will not lose points. With illness that's occurring, um, you should not come to class when you're ill. If you have signs of the flu or another virus, you should seek medical attention and get a medical note stating that you should not be in class and for how long you should not be in class. Um, if we have an online class, you're expected to have your camera on. If it's a synchronous online class, your cameras must be on so that you can see each other and see me and I can see you. All the research shows that students who feel more connected to their peers do better in class. And so if we are going to be online for any reason, cameras must be on. If you have a reason that you think you should be excused from that, you can email me that day. Each day that you think you have a reason to not turn your um, computer camera on, you can email me separate days. Um, if we have presentations or intern visits, you're, you, there's no excused absences during that time. You just automatically lose points from your grade. This is because if people come to speak to us, um, or like especially the interns, they take time out of their busy schedule to come talk to our class. It's critical that each of you, when you have the opportunity to talk to people, that you actually take advantage of it. So that's an important aspect to read over. 
Uh, leaving early and arriving late, unacceptable. It counts towards your attendance grade. I keep track of that. It tells you excused absences for a medical excuse. This is very important because of the increased number of forged medical notes. These are the items that are required for me to accept your medical note. If you give me a medical note that does not have all of this, I will not accept it. And then you can either try to get me what I need or you'll have to work with student affairs. Legal reasons, death of immediate family. In this situation, you work with the Office of Student Affairs and they send all of your instructors um, how many days you should be excused. And religious holidays, I can usually find those on the internet, so I don't really need you to give me any type of documentation in most cases. If I need help finding documentation, I'll let you know. Sometimes there are other reasons that I do excuse for absence. Those are handled on an individual basis. Um, and you can approach me if you feel like you have some other reason that you would like me to consider. Since you get two unexcused absences a semester, if I don't ex consider it an excused absence, unless you have a lot of absences, it will not affect your grade. Due dates, your assignments are due when they're due. Um, if you turn it in a minute late, it's late, and you will lose the full um, 20%. And um, your grants are actually 25% off. You are required to save your assignments in a certain way, in a certain order, and that's designed to help you learn how to group all of your assignments or all relevant information together. So all of your Health 315 assignments will be grouped together wherever it is you save them, and that's going to be very important as you're trying to find them later in the semester or even maybe a year from now. Um, resubmission of assignments, you're allowed to rewrite the first two papers for the class if you submit them on time. If you submit something late, you're not allowed to rewrite it. You've already had extra time, so this explains that process. I do expect you to participate in class in a positive way. It's a very hard class. I cannot imagine you have time to be on Facebook or Snapchat or anything else other than working on our class. So if I see you wandering off electronically on your device, I'm going to ask you to leave and it would be in an unexcused absence. Um, you, I do expect you to have devices in class with you because you will use them in almost every class that we have. We talk about electronic devices, academic integrity. I spend a little bit of time talking about here because it's so important for you. If you breach the academic integrity policy for the university, you will be sent over to student affairs for a hearing and for disciplinary action. That's what happens. It doesn't matter if it's a small case of plagiarism or breach of academic integrity or a huge incidence. Every incidence of breach of academic integrity for my classes is sent to student affairs. It's your responsibility to read over that policy. Um, the communication, I pick up my mail once a day during the work week, Monday through Friday, early morning. That is the minimum I will pick up my email. So I promise you that before nine o'clock every day, Monday through Friday, I will pick up email if they're work days. <clears throat> I rarely pick up email on the weekends. So this, if something really important happens that you need me to know, you would send me an email about it, and then you would send me a text message saying, please check your email. And then I will try to get to my email as soon as I can. The only way that I can stay focused in the amount of grading in this class is that I have to take a break. Um, and I usually do that from Friday around 4 o'clock until Sunday around 5 o'clock. I try not to touch any grading. Emails, it tells you the kind of information to put in there. Um, there's policies that are in the undergraduate catalog. If you have special needs or you need uh, student services, Towson has a lot of great services for you. And these are all listed here. Last time I checked, all these links worked, but I, I will check again before the semester starts. Um, 
if you have to repeat this course more than twice, you have to get special permission to do that. Withdrawal policy, there's our civility uh, policy for our, for our major, a link to the health education major handbook, um, and some information about how to save your work. One thing I like to go over, let's see when we get to grading. Um, you must earn a C or better in this class. I'd like to go over this with you because you need to understand the grading for this class because I don't want you to be upset with your grades. In the beginning, a lot of people start with C's or D's. Um, this, a C means that you are an average writer. You're writing like an average college student. You are on level. That's what a C means. It means you're the average college student. You have average writing skills like every college student has. A B means that it's slightly better than that. And an A means that it's excellent writing skills way beyond what an undergraduate student is expected to have. So it's hard to get an A in this class, but many people do get A's. And we'll talk about how to do that in the first um, slideshow we went over. So here's how the grading is broken. Grading is broken down. There's a thousand points in the class. That means you have to consistently mess up for it to really affect your grade. So if you miss one assignment, it might not impact your grade much. If you miss three or four assignments, it will. If you mess up one of these larger papers, it might have a little impact in your grade. If you miss two, you're likely to not pass. And one of the reasons is, is that each paper builds upon the one prior. So if you miss the needs assessment paper, when it's time to turn in the community analysis, you don't have all the feedback from the needs assessment paper that you need to make a better community analysis paper. And that's true for every single paper. Your grant that you write at the end of the semester is a culmination of all of these papers combined. So the more you pay attention to the feedback you receive and the more careful you are to get all these papers turned in, then the much higher chances you are of getting an A or B in the class because you'll have a lot of feedback for this grant. Just to talk a little bit about feedback, if you receive a paperback from me that has no feedback on it, you're looking at the wrong thing because there will be extensive feedback on all of your papers. The large papers I download and grade outside of Blackboard. I then upload a copy of your paper with comments and a copy of a scoring rubric with your grade on it. The smaller assignments I grade inside Blackboard. I don't download them. This is the grade breakdown. Very few people do not pass on the first time they take this class. And oftentimes those people who do not pass have gotten permission to take a science course at the same time as this class, or their obligations outside of school have changed and they have a work or family obligations that are preventing them from doing well. But honestly, almost every student receives a C or better the first time they take the class. This explains the larger papers, and we will go over them extensively in class. There are quizzes. Uh, each unit has a quiz. I want units one through four you can take twice. Um, the final exam is a quiz eight. Um, you can only take that once. And just goes over everything that we're going to do briefly. We then have a course schedule. It's your responsibility to know if we're in class or we're synchronous or asynchronous. I don't want anybody to show up thinking we're in class and we're not. That's a huge waste of your time. So just make sure you pay very close attention to these um, dates. And there's also a calendar at the end. Uh, this calendar is not correct yet. I haven't fixed it at the time that I'm making this uh, this um, video, for example, it says that September 6th is Memorial Day, and that's not correct. This was a summer calendar. I'm in the process of changing. So just make sure you check out um, all of that information. If you have any questions about anything related to the syllabus, related to your assignments, related to your grades, please make sure you send me an email or ask in class. 
Um, there are there's a lot of writing in this class. There's a tremendous amount of grading for me, and I do sometimes make mistakes. So just let me know. Um, always, if you have questions about the content or where we're going or what we're doing, again, always make sure you ask. I look forward to seeing you the end of the month, and I am sure we're going to have a fantastic semester together.